All right, this next batch of stuff is somewhat more interesting for the retro rookery than the brass items I showcased previously. And for this video, I'll be presenting a bunch of old board games ranging from 1949 to 1981 or a little later, which have just finished a four month stint on Etsy and are now back on my eCreator store. And links will be given to their individual entries in the description. Now, to begin with, we'll start with the oldest of the batch here. Now, going back to 1949, we have a very early edition of Cootie, back when they were still owned by Shaper, before Tycho had them in the 70s and then Hasbro later picked them up. In fact, this was the first year this game came to market with a creepier bug design than the Tycho era cootie that I'm more familiar with and actually prefer myself. And of course, although the box has seen better days, the game is complete. So, let's put one of these little buggers together. I'll show you what we got here. We will go with the green body. We only have one color choice for the head. Let's see, then we pick out six legs. The heads do seem to fit fairly loose in the body. That one's a little more snug, but still comes out pretty easy. But what do you expect from such an ancient uh, game? Oh yeah, you might want to do some sanding on the pegs or something to try and reinforce them a little. Or layer super glue or something, who knows. I'll leave that up to whoever buys the game. Let's see, then we got eyes, one there. And there. Pair of antennas. And finally the cootie tongue, or they call it just the proboscis. And there you have it, a 1949 Vintage Cootie. Now this next one is one of the less exciting pieces. It's just a old educational spelling game from 1963 by Milton Bradley called Link Letters. And I actually have two of this one. <clears throat> and just a bunch of alphabet tiles that link together. Yeah, like I said, I actually have two of this one, and I honestly have no idea if either of them are missing any pieces, considering the instructions on the inside of the box don't say how many pieces they're supposed to be. And as you can see, the box has definitely seen better days. And in addition to spelling, Milton Bradley also saw fit 
to do a math counterpart, also in 1963, called, of course, Link Numbers. And, as you can see, it works pretty much the same way, but with numbers making out equations and other math problems. Now, this one does not have instructions on the inside of the box, unlike link letters, but I've got uh, three of this one. And then that brings us to up to 1978 with the uh, a short-lived game from Parker Brothers called Outwit. Once again, the box has some wear, especially uh, like scratches or rubs all over the cover and normal shelf wear. However, it is missing one piece missing the brown power piece which is would be uh, the brown version of this one with the dot on it which is explained in the game but it looks like it should be a pretty simple matter to make a replacement for yourself or, or just uh, or purchasing one from someone else that has a complete one And now we continue on to 1981. By now, Lakeside Games have given us a great mechanical classics of perfection and superfection, both of which were really fun with plenty of replay value. So how can they squeeze a little more mileage from the perfection name? How about Puzzle Perfection? So with no timer and no pressure to finish before everything goes kablooey all over the table, this one pits up to six players trying to get as many shapes three in a row on their individual boards. And it seems like a pretty decent to game with plenty of replay value, but I suspect this one did not do very well against the established classics when it hit the shelves. And as is typical with vintage board games, the box has taken a bit of beating, but it's otherwise intact, and the game is complete as far as I can tell. Now, although the box claims antique, that's obviously a marketing lie from whoever produced this old Moncala game, and the genericness of the packaging screams late 1980s or early 90s, so still retro rookery material. But still, why the manufacturer would put zero identifying information, you know, like brand or company name, for example, on their product is a mystery. It's a good bet they no longer exist, but what do they expect if they put out a product and no one knows who to come back to for more, or who to recommend to their friends, or anything else that gets their name out there? The only identifying marking is the product number IY19. Regardless, here is what you get in the set. Comes with a nice high quality wood board, game board, 50 plastic beads that are made to look uh, wooden, which definitely would seem maybe late 80s to or beyond or into the 90s and a neat little uh, pouch cloth pouch to hold them 
the storage box has, of course, taken a bit of a beating over the years. And as you can see, the front clasp is gone. But otherwise, the game is complete. And finally, from 1980, we have Ideals Rebound. A rather gimmicky game based roughly on shuffleboard, I guess. As you can see, the box is a bit beat up, as to be expected. And also... There's actually two extra pucks, one of each color. I got a feeling the ones in the baggie might have been some replacements that the previous owner purchased. Who knows? Uh, well, real importantly, as you can see, uh, the bumpers are missing, which, uh, if you can't find the originals, should probably be pretty easy to use a com to use a couple uh, suitably long, wide, and strong rubber bands instead. Now, for this one, I do highly recommend contacting me about shipping first before committing to purchase because the shipping could be uncomfortably high due to the size of the package. However, it could also be that the box will be narrow enough so the entire package size may be small enough for sane shipping. I just don't know. And so that wraps it up for what should be the final edition of the Retro Rickery Showroom for 2019. I am going to try to get this processed edited and uploaded and published before midnight just so I can say it's the last one of the year. The next one, which should happen early next month, will likely be at least two videos or three even, uh, briefly demoing video games that came back from Etsy and are now on my eCreator store. In the meantime, I will try to get cracking on those other retro rookery and crow's nest projects that I've posted about. <coughs> Links to each item showcased here are in the description below. As always, feel free to email me here or there on eCreator with any questions or concerns, and if an item shows is on hold, message me anyway, since someone else is likely simply ahead of you, and if they don't make the purchase, you'll be next in line to be contacted.